Closed captioning for sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode. While we're near Kamloops in one of the many prolific lakes that they have here, you know, some lakes we go to we can't name, but fortunately today we are going to name it. We're at Leighton Lake, which is right next to Tunqua Lake. It takes about an hour to get here outside of Kamloops. We're also joined with Brian Chan. And Brian, of course, from the Freshwater Fisheries Society of BC, the GoFishBC.com website, which is a great source of information for any angling spots throughout all British Columbia. A good thing to check out. And with Brian, he's going to help us on Leighton Lake as he was here last week to see if we can get in some fish. We're looking to fish up to three to four, maybe even five pounds today. So fishing with Brian at Leighton Lake, that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, G. Loomis Rods, and High Drift Boats. It's been, been a little while since we got one, eh? We came out here you know, for about an hour and uh, we had a couple of takes early on the Connie and it was pretty quiet. So we decided to go in and we saw a couple of big bombers coming off, a couple of caddis moving around, not a whole bunch of activity, no. a few fish moving. But Talk to here's the big thing. When we're going to do a throat pump, we need to find out what's going on today. Exactly. That's the biggest thing, just trying to get that fish. And the probably the easiest thing to do is again go with the Connie's to start. But we did see a couple. We did see a couple on the water, so. Yeah, a little guy. Nice little fish. Yeah. 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 Now, the contents of the vial. <laughs> Ever so critical <laughs> when you're when you're struggling to find stuff. And you know, usually when we look at vial contents like this when it's tough going, it's usually shrimp. <laughs> what have we got? <laughs> we got like a couple little shrimp and not not, <laughs> not a happy fish. <laughs> But you're able to coax them on the crying. That's big. So, you know what? That's what we hate to see. I know, Brian. You know how much we hate to fish, fish shrimp. Sure. But uh, hey, you know what? They don't crank up. We have to put on the shrimp and suck it up. You do it for <laughs> Well, let's see if we can get another one. Anyways, I'm my strategy now. I think is to. I've got that little caddis pupa on it. I think I'll start with the caddis pupa. Well, just keep trying that. There's fish moving. They're just, yeah, they're just not quite happy. It's fairly early. I mean, we just got out here. We've been here for an hour. What are you going to try? Are you going to stick with the chronic? Well, I'm going to, you know, still see the odd shuck drifting by. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it might just happen. Yeah. Well, the chronic We've got to try different stuff. Exactly. Big bombers, a lot of shucks in the water. So, yeah, and you got one on the chronic, but so far. Can't be that bad. Could be worse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Advice there paid off. It came out. Brian got one on the crony. 
Can we get this guy? Okay. On the boat. A little kelp. Fish hey. and sponge. You know what? I, I don't mind. I'll take anything. Well, there's that. There's the blood worm. It's in his mouth. And you know what's funny? Because I was bringing that in. I tweaked it a few times. And again, I started bringing it a little bit quicker. Oh, we have gee, company. We have company. <laughs> and those well, the loons, loons aren't going to eat this guy, are they? He's pretty He's going to come up right under the net. Is he? Okay, there's the blood worm out. Oh yeah, there he goes. He was right, right, boom, he's got bowling by, look at the bubbles. I'm scared of him. Put my hands in the water here. <laughs> well, there he is, look at him. We got a loon, right under the boat. You got a sample? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's just swimming around. So, well, what? He's not going to be able to eat this guy. Though, oh no, he? but he'll no. try. Are you kidding? Okay, well, like Brian said, it's a cow. <laughs> look at him, he's just circling. <laughs> There he is there. This guy's just come your, off the spawn. Watch your fingers. Oh, we'll let him go. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm not. There he goes. Let's so see if he chases him. Oh, oh, he did. He bit at him. He took a bite at him. <laughs> Unbelievable. These loons are just so aggressive. What's going on? They don't want to work for their own food. I just can't believe it. Oh, well. That's the they've learned. You know, they've learned. They come, they've taught their young. So what do we figure then? Now we've got that guy. Now you've got the, the fish on the cron. Right? We're out with, Again, we want to have to come in deep water, 15 yeah. feet of water. I got that guy in the blood worm. Yeah. Not a huge action, but it's like a fish every, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, it's, I mean, considering what else is going on in the lake, it, again, I think it's just confirming there's a, there's a hatch going to happen here soon, and it may not be happening getting bushes today, but in the next week or so, if we get some continued warm weather, right. we're going we're gonna to see some great coronamid and big, the big pupa coming off. Oh, fish oh, right there right by your right bob. <laughs> That's you're good. looking up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think the big key too is getting low. We're, we're like we're, we're down pretty deep. close. We're down deep. We're right near the bottom. Foot off the bottom. You know, 13, 14 foot liters is tougher, oh, but gone. Blood worms. Oh, excellent. That's what I had I on. Knew Just had to be a coincidence. Hey, way to go. Good call. They're on them. Excellent. There you go. Come deep water. Oh. Fish some blood oh, worms. Catch some fish. Still there. Still Let's there. get them. Still there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Move, move to a new location. Brian was saying, well, you know, we kind of noticed some fish moving in the shallows and we kept sliding in, kind of sliding in. Now we're in probably what, six feet of water? Six feet of water. We're just on, the, on top of those. There's weed growing up off the bottom. So we've got about four feet to play with from the weed tops to the surface of the lake. And the fish are cruising, picking off dams and shrimp. Like and I think the big thing to note too is we got a little bit of rift. There was no rift up earlier. The fish were kind of out in yep, the middle. The little rift will came up. They get comfortable coming in that shallow water. That's right. They? So you got to be, you know, we've been moving. Grant's got to pull the anchor. I got to pull. <laughs> yeah. You just sit there. That's <laughs> always just sit here, relax, take a cast, oh, catch fish. I think we got to move to find fish today. And we did. We actually moved in here. Now we slid in first cast with a leech. And, a, and there's another big point. You know, we put the leech patterns on in the weeds. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Oh, that's where they're living. That's what they're like. living. So. Excellent. And then we got Mr. Scud. We always got Granny if we got to go change over to the shrimp, right? That's right. <laughs> Last resort, Mr. Scud. Last resort. Oh, he's all snarkled. Ah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Fish oh, on. Junkier fish. Well, persistence paid off. Boy, got to work for him today. Oh, yeah. But you know, it's been fun watching the thought process go on with Brian, with Don and that about how to locate fish. And the first, we started kind of in yeah. the middle, yeah. a little bit deeper. <laughs> All the fish were jumping near shore. We started, no, actually they were jumping in the middle and we came to shore. <laughs> yeah. And then we reversed, we went out there and they started rising near shore. We, we all three had to agree to move. That's, that, that's what took a while. <laughs> but then the key for me was what you said, you know they come in shallow, they like to feed in shallow. And once the riffles there, then yeah. they got some protection. And they're, they're here. They're here now. There you go. We see that leech right there. Oh, there we go. What a, nice. What a chunky. It's not huge, oh, but it's chunky. Can I see that throat sampler coming out? We just bit one. We haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. It hasn't been too hot yet. Gone, not in your finger, that's a good nope. thing. Nope. Didn't quite tire him out enough. No. So 
So what, what's the size of fish range that we're going to look for in here today? Um, well, we, can, oops, we could see fish up to four pounds. Wow. Um, we, it's this late in lake stock, we stock it annually and uh, with about 4,000 fish. And this is a, this is typical what's in here. This fish would have been stocked last spring. So fairly good growth good rate. Good growth, yep. Oh man, she's slippery. <laughs> There you go. Nice. Nice collars. Nice and healthy. Good girth to it. Yeah. Pretty fish. Yeah. All right. Let's let's, let's see if this guy's doing anything this morning. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Same thing that I have on. Actually, same thing that I got on right now. We, they won't take the but, artificial. So, so there, there's one green chronomid in there, and the rest are all small shrimp. But the interesting is, thing is that most of the shrimp, some of them are alive. About 50% yeah. of these shrimp are alive. So it's just starting to get going. It's okay. starting to get going. So maybe it'll pick up. So we just got to be persistent. We just got to. On this particular lake, when you see fish moving, jumping, even though they're not feeding, even they're just splashing. It doesn't matter, you know there's fish there. And okay. so you gotta move. That's why we've been, you know, having to pull the anchor every five minutes and move, but it's you know, I think it'll pay off. You know, we're obviously starting to catch a few fish now. So. Yep. Good. And hopefully they'll they'll get serious about eating. In the meantime, we gotta keep you switching patterns. <laughs> saying <laughs> yesterday on the way here from the other lake was that uh, we had to get here early because it shuts down after lunch. You can't eat lunch then today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that tuna fish sandwich I just had that wasn't lunch. No, that was a snack. So what are you thinking? Well you know we we saw some a few bomber shucks on the water this morning. Yep. We actually hit a couple fish we missed them and then we landed one on a big bomber. So I'm thinking you know these fish have shut down in the shallow water here along the weed line. I think we should try moving out into deeper water and uh, hanging some big chronomid larvae on the bottom. Okay. Because there's a, if there's a few, oh. oops, if there's a few bombers around, there maybe there's a bunch that are in the larval stage or getting a little active, and uh, I think it's worth a try. Better than just sitting here watching our bobbers do nothing. That's right. <laughs> Oh, we got problems. Oh, the one. Oh, uh, not shoot. just one, but two. That's probably the best thing could happen for him to fall off. Yeah. Would have probably got him. Yeah. But it was good. We moved out to try that deeper water because we saw those few chronomid shucks out here, the bombers, and it was the first cast. So. Yeah. What did you put on? A big brown pheasant tail chronomid bomber. Okay. Pupa boat. 10 2 X. Oh, moved right under the boat. <laughs> <laughs> They're hungry. Um, but that's a good sign. Look right there. there is, yeah. What a bug! Oh, there's the other one right there's there. There's the other one. You think they're hungry? <laughs> there's... Holy this gosh. is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys having trouble catching fish too? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyways, whoa, man. They're... Yeah. I can't believe they're that close. Oh, look at... <laughs> Anyways, that might be a good sign we can catch some fish. Yeah, that didn't take long at all. No, so, never know, you know, they, the chronomids are staging. There's going to be some big chronomid hatches right. in this deep water, deeper part of the lake coming up. And, you know, just seeing those first few shot, signs of shocks means there's something happening down there. And I'm sure you know, the fish are looking for them. They're waiting. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll get lucky today and get, get a couple of them. All right, hopefully the loons go somewhere else. Jeez. I was out fishing with a good friend of mine from Princeton, BC, Colin Wyron. And he was out fishing me about five to one in one of the local lakes, so I asked him what he was using. And he yelled back, not for out. And I said, not for out. And he said, yeah, not for out. He said, say it very slowly. So I did, and it's not for Al. Well, Al is the conservation officer over in Princeton. So Al, here's your fly. It's called the not for out. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly.
start to fly off is in all our patterns. Just take your black thread and tie on a good base layer. Start off by tying on the tail and I've taken about six to eight strands of my barred mallard. I'm going to make it about the length of the hook and just tie it in for the tail. Again, don't use too many barbs. Use about six to eight and keep the tail fairly thin and small. Take some of your fine silver wire and wrap it in and this will be used to rib the, rib the fly a little bit later. I've taken a full mallard feather and you can see how much I've trimmed off. I've trimmed off the majority of the feather itself. I'm going to take the rest of this feather, pull it all together and tie it in by the tips right at the rear of the hook. I'm going to tie it in and then wrap this forward to form the body. And again, keep it fairly thin. And we're going to go up about two-thirds up the hook. And keep the body thin and wrap it nice and tight. Now that we have the body tied in, I'm going to take that silver wire we had off the back and take about five to six turns to form the ribbing on the body. Take another mallard feather and we're going to tie this in right, right about two-thirds up the hook. This will be used for the wing case a little bit later. Now this next ingredient is really what makes the fly. It's, it's as I showed you on in the intro, it's the still water sparkle blend light olive dubbing. You won't want it too thick, but you just want to pull off a little bit and dub it onto your hook. And this sparkle blend just accentuates the fly. So I'm going to dub it on and wrap it in for the thorax. The final step to the fly is to take that material we had put in for the wing case, pull it over our thorax, a sparkle dub, and create the wing case. Snip off the excess material and whip finish finish off the fly. So there's a great little pattern and as Colin told me it works excellent for mayfly nymphs and for damselfly nymphs. Another thing to remember, it's not for Al. Brian, why is it important to be right near the bottom here? And then Satch, you got a pretty good technique to get you right near the bottom. Yeah. Well, you so, the reason why we want to be on the bottom is because the cronmet larvae or bloodworms are living in that mud water in interface. They're building little cocoons right at the bottom, right in the bottom mud. So we want to be within about a foot of the bottom. Kind of a nice thing too is when we come out here, of course Brian's got the, uh, the depth founder, the depth sounder, whatever you want to call it. Very important because you've got to find the depth. Once, we've, once we're close, a little trick I use is I get some forceps. Just crimp them onto your hook and make sure they're on there good. And then just drop her down. Actually drop it down. Got my indicator there. Just let her go down. Then there's my indicator. I'll see when I hit bottom. So I'm pretty close. There is where it hit. I'm probably eight inches off yeah, the bottom. Yeah, eight inches, ten inches off the bottom. So I know that my fly is going to be sitting right near the bottom. And it's a great way to find your indication very quickly. As long as you don't lose your forceps like I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> so again, some more good tips to help you catch some more fish. Let's go through, let's go through the iteration we went through the day. Like, we started off first hour pretty quiet. We saw some fish moving a few around in the shallows, so we slid in the shallows. Yeah. Hooked some fish. Then we noticed there was nothing going on in the shallows anymore. And Brian, you were saying, well, let's go out to 15, 16 feet. They might be feeding on bloodworms. And there's some shucks out here, so we know there's the odd cronman hatch, but we know there's more to come, so bloodworms can be a logical choice. Right, so we came out, actually moved out a little bit, caught some on cr some cronomids, and, and went back in to try some, some uh, what did we try in there? Shrimp, shrimp and, and some leeches. leeches again. Got another fish in there, then it quieted off. Then we came out for the bloodworms, and we've That's caught right. fish oh. everywhere we want. He fell off. I'm talking too much. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice fish too. There was. But we have. We've caught in every fish on every technique. 
but it hasn't been steady. It's been, no. uh, you know, 15, 10, 15 minutes in between fish. But you know what? It turns a bad day where you can sit around all day and get absolutely nothing yeah. into a pretty good day. No, we've, we've had to work out, but that's okay, you know. It's casual. Oh, I know you and Grant are happy. I mean, we, we've been eating all day. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got about 20 pounds of cherries. I can hate to see you guys later. It's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. But it's been a good day. So, and the day's probably half over. So, we got a lot of time now. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, oh, good. too bad. That was a nice day. We'll get him. We'll get him. <laughs> a baby. <laughs> oh, look at that. The flag just popped out. You don't get to have a look at it now. <laughs> hey. Here, take your phone. <laughs> Little baby. Is he big enough to, to throw no, something? No, we, we probably won't because it's a little nah, bit too small, too but small. that's good, you know. You want them 12, 14 inches before you yeah. do a throw sample on them. This guy's a little bit too small, so we'll let him go. Yeah, I'll let him go, and then hopefully, I've had a couple bites now with the green, so we'll, we'll give it a try. Put it back on. Yeah. A little baby. Yeah, he is. He's still got the farm mark. Oh, look at another condiment hatching right there. Oh, we've got a hatch. We got a hatch. We got activity. I'm liking it. That was, uh, I guess the cows were starting to lay down in the pasture and the wind started to kick up. You know what that's telling us something? It's not a good side. It's time to go. But you know what? It's been a pretty good day today. We, we had to do everything though. Yeah. We, we did a, had to do a lot of moving, a lot of looking, and uh, you know, using that trope pump really helped today. Even though we didn't catch a ton of fish, at least it got us dialed into a little bit more accurate representation of what the fish were, what few fish were actually feeding. Yeah, and I think a generic way we approached the lake today was pretty good. You know, we went in towards the weeds, fished some leeches, we went on the deeper water, did some bloodworms. I think that's a pretty good way to approach it. If you're not having luck in shallow, yeah. go well, a little deeper. You know, you got to move. Yeah. A lot of anglers get stuck sitting in one spot for hour upon hour, and if there's nothing happening there, you got to pull the anchors and you got to go look around. Kind of look around. Like we went for a little tour of the lake, yeah. and we found some small crown of attaching and you little green guys on, and yeah. you know, we hooked the fish there. So just got to look. Got to look. Well, again, thanks for the day. Me and Grant had a lot of fun, as always. Yeah. Always have a good time. When you're out in the wild, make sure you take care. Conserve our waters, like Brian does with the society. Great job. And we'll see you next time. We'll take a sport fishing on the fly. But now I'm going to reel in real slow. <laughs> see if I get some on the pole. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, Head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.